All right, folks, it's 1.15, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out to the membership seminar. We've got an awful lot uh, to cover, so I'm going to move through some of these slides uh, fairly quickly. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm willing to share the presentation with you, so there's no need to uh, take pictures of, of every slide other than maybe the, the first one uh, that I'm about to show you here um, with my... Uh, credentials on it for you. There we go. So that is uh, my information direct to the desk. I'd be more than happy again if you just shoot me an email. I'll share the presentation with you so you can enjoy the presentation and absorb uh, all the great information I'm hoping to pass here. Uh, that line is my direct line, 442-2060. Please feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email anytime you need anything. I didn't have any uh, Dignitaries sneak into the room. I mean, the national commander. Anybody today? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we are trying um, feverishly to, you know, continue to update uh, our program, make things fun, um, embrace technology, and we're continuing that trend with uh, a couple of different programs that uh, we're going to talk about today. Uh, the first thing that I want to remind everybody is about is uh, our March Membership Madness Tournament. Um, so what we're trying to do is kind of plant the psychological seed that when you start to hear about the conference turn basketball tournaments and March Madness, that you start thinking, aha, we need to start checking out where we're at with our membership recruitment totals to ensure we're going to meet goal uh, before membership year end, which is June 30, uh, so that you're not rushing when May rolls around to try to make goal. So, and this is a nice, fun way to get us to embrace technology uh, with respect to um, our, our recruitment efforts as well, because the only memberships that count towards uh, the March Membership Madness Tournament are online applications. Uh, we will be doing this again next year, so there's a couple of different ways uh, that you can be recognized for your efforts. Uh, of course, we would have the department champion, uh, and hopefully the department leaderships are out there uh, rallying the troop troops at the chapters. But uh, the department champion is the, the, uh, uh, ind the individual department that goes uh, from uh, bracket to bracket to bracket without losing, without being defeated, all the way to the end. And then we also have a department MVP award uh, for the department that recruits the most overall members during this period. So if a department had a, had a bad uh, matchup um, during one of the brackets, uh, that they're not out of it, they could still get the MVP award. Uh, we also recognize our top individual recruiter and a runner-up as well. Uh, and they get a very nice prize, the, uh, an engraved iPad, as you can see from the screen. Uh, there is a minimum requirement of, of 25 members that they would need to recruit online to, to be eligible for that. Uh, so we're just trying to figure out fun ways to do a couple of things, get our folks to embrace technology when recruiting. I was so very pleased I had uh, one of my... Um, one of my uh, folks from uh, my uh, uh, stomping grounds in Michigan came up to me and said, hey, here I recruited somebody using your uh, online application. So that was good stuff. Um, the winning departments also receive uh, $250 gift cards uh, from Office Depot. And again, we, we really want to, uh, you know, encourage organic recruiting. You know, how do we uh, make it possible for folks to recruit on the spot. And, you know, as a young service officer coming up the ranks, I always had my senior leadership saying, hey, always have a membership application on you, right? Well, with the online application, uh, now you can. You should always have one on you. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we've noticed about online recruiting, why there's such an emphasis on this for us, is that all of the metrics tell me that if we can recruit them online, they're exponentially more likely to convert to full life membership, right? because uh, we got that credit card on file and it's fire and forget. There's also a higher proclivity for folks to just buy their full life membership outright if you can convince them to do it with a credit card, um, <clears throat> as opposed to taking a payment of, of $40 and we may never hear from them again, okay? Um, <clears throat> so again, with the March Membership Madness uh, tournament, any online recruiting platform can be used. So if you go to DAV.org and sign somebody up, or uh, the, the mobile app on your phone or a pad, all that stuff counts towards this effort. <clears throat> so 
So this year, um, I announced at uh, our commanders and adjutants <coughs> uh, meeting here recently that Missouri has dethroned Nebraska as the uh, as the tournament champion. Nebraska has uh, has uh, voiced their strong uh, contention to get back into this next year. But uh, you know, you can see we start off uh, everybody uh, seated, and and we give the the higher seedings to. Uh, um, the favor more favorable seatings to our departments that have done the best in the previous membership year. So just another fun way to encourage camaraderie and a little bit of competition amongst the departments here. So please, please participate. I just, when you start hearing about the tournaments again, start thinking, hey, we got to be recruiting online. Missouri's going to win again. Okay. Sorry, the trash, trash talking's already started. I love it. All right. So, uh, now to really get, get down to business on some stuff here, uh, just wanted to bring everybody up to speed on a few things. Um, and I talked a little bit about this last year uh, for those that weren't here. <clears throat> um, so we really had to take a hard look at our membership file. And I wanted to ensure the integrity of our file. So <clears throat> we went about figuring out how do we make sure that everybody we have on our file is someone that we either know as a member or that we can reach out to as a member prospect, right? So the first thing that we did um, at year end last year, so June 30, July 1, is we purged 37,000 names from our files that we just didn't know where they came from. We had no valid address on them, no point of contact for those individuals. So there was nothing that we could do uh, with them moving forward. Um, we also recognized that we had 188,000 trial members that were currently on the rolls as of last year. We decided that um, we needed to go back and clean that file up as well. So we had uh, to take 185,000 of those, or pardon me, 183,000 of those folks and move them to our member prospect file so they would no longer be considered trial members because they'd been on that in those in that role for more than three years and that shouldn't have happened it's just our membership system we're working on replacing it but um, it, it just wasn't nibbled enough to make that happen on an automatic basis we've got some procedures in place now to make sure that that happens we also unfortunately identified uh, as we were looking at file integrity um, 80,000 members that we were counting as part life members who we had never received a dime from so what happened basically was in the membership system that we had previous to our current platform uh, that we came over from in 2003, that old system did not have a mechanism to identify trial members. So they put them on the system as part life with nothing paid, okay, as a way to record it. So when we did the data dump from the old system to the new system, it wasn't caught and so they, kept, they were uh, in perpetuity recorded as part life members. So we had to remove them as part life members and put them into the member prospect file. So we did have good addresses on them and whatnot, but again, it was just another housekeeping mechanism. So um, what does that mean for our numbers? You may have noticed on our literature already, we're using more than 1 million members. So for a while, we've been saying 1.3 million members, right? It's, one, it's more than 1 million now. So that's the verbiage we need to use. So this is a good thing. We want to have transparency. We want to have integrity with respect to our file count. We want to know where people are and where we're counting them and be appropriate with that. So, um, <clears throat> so when, if you look at the current population report from year end, all of that stuff has, has been completed now, taken place, and we're uh, a little bit over uh, 1 million members now. Um, <clears throat> to kind of help alleviate some of this prior to moving the trial members to the uh, to the prospect file, we did share those folks with the department leadership, and I'm hopeful that they, and I know in most cases they shot them out to the chapters uh, to try to reach out to these folks. It was a Herculean effort. We did have some success with it um, in converting those trial members to paid members. Uh, a lot of people were receptive. A lot of people were like, who are you? So, you know, it just depended on, on who uh, the individual is that we were contacting. Um, <clears throat> we also want to continue uh, bringing on board new trial members, but we want to ensure that we're bringing on quality prospects. So uh, what we're doing is, um, 
either at our transition service officer sites uh, where we're offering uh, claims assistance. There we cannot directly recruit folks because of our memorandums of understanding with the bases. Uh, so we have to wait until they're out. So we're just recording some basic information from them that does not include their address. We just get it like a name, rank, serial number type stuff. Um, and a date of discharge so that 30 days after their date of discharge, we can then, then offer them a trial membership. At that point, if they re-engage with us and give them, give us our, our give us their um, mailing address and whatnot, we can shoot them the, the few free magazines and keep track of them in an appropriate manner. So uh, also our, my counterparts in employment are doing a great job of uh, offering trial memberships to our folks that they're engaging at the job fairs. Uh, we'll also be happy to share that information with, with our chapters and departments as well. <clears throat> so um, all of that cleaning up the membership file kind of brought us to where we're at now. Uh, for uh, quite a while, we have heard um, you know, from our membership, uh, especially the folks that were really working hard to try to recruit members for the organization that they felt like they were just kind of on the treadmill and, and never had the opportunity to make gold because um, their part life member situation was out of control. Um, so when I first took the reins a few years ago as membership director, I, um, uh, one of the first things I, I wanted to do was make sure everybody understood how goal was formulated, how, how you could attain goal. And just in a nutshell and keeping the math easy, essentially the old goal formula was if you had a thousand full life members in your chapter and you had 100 part life members, uh, the number we've been using forever is 55, so 55%. So 55% of your part life members plus your total full life members would be your goal. So in that scenario, your goal would end up being 1,055 members at the end of the membership year um, is what you would need to attain. So if you were in a chapter um, that had a large number of part life members, you can see how very easily that goal would be very difficult to attain. So, um, and it was just, it was really this arbitrary type number. And on the other side of the spectrum, we had a lot of chapters and departments that did an outstanding job of, you know, helping pay down their part life memberships um, and keeping that number very, very low. Well, what does that mean? When we established goal for those folks, their goal was very, very small. And so they weren't required to or asked to recruit that many people, and that's not what we want either. And in addition to that, there was an impediment to recruiting part life members, and I wanted to remove that. Um, and so fortunately, uh, leadership agreed, and we were able to, um, to change goals. So we sent out uh, a memo uh, on January 4th to the departments asking them to give us uh, some information. And what the spreadsheets contained was the zip codes for every single area in their department's jurisdiction. Their task was to designate a chapter or chapters for each zip code. Um, we asked for this to come back to us by March. They did a pretty good job of getting it back to us. Um, we had a few stragglers, but uh, it was a difficult thing to manage. Um, and the idea is we're taking our membership prospect file, folks that we have names, addresses to include zip codes on, and we're taking at least a portion of that file and running it into this zip code file that we've now created for the departments uh, and distributing those folks to determine what their goal should be based on those prospective numbers. So we're establishing a real world goal. Um, <clears throat> we want the emphasis now to be on new members, new paid members. So no longer will the emphasis be on conversion of part life to full life members, because really what we're doing there is eating our own, right? We're preaching to the choir. We want to get out and you know spread the good word of DAV to, uh, to folks that haven't heard it before. And again, we don't want there to be that impediment with respect to recruiting part life members. Not everybody can afford 250 bucks or whatever for a membership. So in order to make that happen, uh, we want to make sure that we're sharing the member prospect file, of which I have two million names. Remember, there are four and a half million 
disabled veterans in the country that are likely eligible for membership in DAV. We've got about two million of them. We know where they live, okay? We will share that information down to the chapter level. Uh, all you gotta do is reach out and we'll help manage it uh, for you. We'll, you'll let us know exactly what you're after and we can get that out to you. My, uh, my uh, membership specialists um, at uh, headquarters do an outstanding job of um, making sure that our chapters and departments get what they need. So, <clears throat> um, let's talk about specifically how we're deriving the new goal. Now, I described the old goal for you, and that was a fairly straightforward scientific method, right? Uh, it's not a state secret. Um, but the, it was more sciencey, right? Straightforward math. The new goal is kind of more artistic. So it's gonna be my job every year to kind of look at the hot list and determine how many of the folks from the prospect list do we need to put on the hot list to overcome our drops? So any members we may lose either due to death or resignation, whatever it is, okay? So if, I, if my analysts tell me, hey, we're gonna lose 25,000 members this year due to drops, then I have to figure out, okay, what should our goal be? So it's really gonna be kind of a sliding scale. There's no percentage of anything necessarily, um, but I just have to look at the prospect files and, and determine how I can give you the most viable member prospects to reach out to. <clears throat> so we've designed the system to engage an algorithm that lets us know based on the prospect list, on what we're calling the hot list, if your goal will be better that way or if it'll be better based on your previous recruiting efforts. So what we also did was went back and we're analyzing what a chapter has historically been able to recruit. And what I'm talking about is new paid members. So I don't want you to confuse the current goal that was established July 1 with what your previous goals used to be, because the previous goals, remember, were based on conversion of part life to full life members, right? This new goal is based either on the hot list, so if you're in an area that has a wealth of member prospects, your goal is gonna be very different than what it was before. And under the new goal formula, it'll also be very different because it'll be based on the total number of new part life and new full life members that you recruited. Not the conversions, just the raw new folks that you historically recruited, okay? So again, some of this is, um, you know, based on our limitations with the current membership system. My analysts have done a terrific job of kind of shoehorning our old system into uh, this new goal into our old system. So uh, we're currently working on a new customer or uh, customer relations management tool, what they call a CRM, that will replace um, our current me membership system. And I'm hopeful that we can engage some geocoding to make some of this a lot more accurate and um, uh, it won't be as, you know, uh, manually laborious as it is on the departments of my staff right now. So <clears throat> the key thing that I want you to take back from here is a couple of different things. First of all, don't forget that. Part life members count towards goal, right? Part life members count towards goal. No longer should they be an impediment to you recruiting, uh, to your recruiting efforts. But the, the chapters need to contact us to request these lists. I would love to just automatically send the lists out to all the all 1300 chapters, okay? Can't do it, they're too big. You know, we're talking again about two million names, right? Those files would be just too big and unmanageable. And, and I'm sure, you know, our chapter in Oshkosh isn't gonna send out 10,000 envelopes to its member prospects, right? We wanna massage the list and, and figure out exactly what their purpose is, how they're trying to attack it. You know, we can give you a list of just all the members we have in your jurisdiction that have email addresses or all the ones with phone numbers, um, the most current ones. However you want to break it down, my membership specialist can break it down that way for you, okay? But they, they've got to reach out to us. Now, I don't want there to be a point of confusion here. Your goal does not have to be satisfied by recruiting members from the prospect list. Remember, we only have two million of them. There's another two and a half million of them out there. People were making gold without prospect lists before. I'm just trying to give you a tool that'll make sure everybody has low hanging fruit to attack, okay? The chapters have got to reach out to my staff and request these files. 
So, um, and again, this is going to be an evolving process. Uh, when I first was having this conversation, Dennis Nixon happened to be in my office, and he's been with DAV for 40 plus years, right? And uh, I asked him, I said, Dennis, you know, do you remember any time we changed goal before? Because it's been the same way the 23 years that I've been with DAV. He said, no, kid, it's, you know, it's been the same since I've been around, too. So this is a kind of a milestone event for us. And I'm hopeful that we'll be successful with it because the important part, again, is to get out um, to the folks that haven't heard our message yet, right? We still need to have internal strategies that promote conversion of part life to full life membership. That's what we want ultimately is full life members. But I don't want there to be the impediment uh, towards recruiting part life members anymore. So another tool that I want to give you besides the uh, the lists, um, we talked about how folks can sign folks up online. The important part is getting that credit card, all right? I can't emphasize that enough. If we can get the credit card, the numbers tell me they're exponentially more likely to become members. So I'm sure you're all familiar with our membership application. So what we're doing now is working on modifying it. Uh, it's actually waiting for me to approve it when I get back to uh, headquarters. Um, but we're working on modifying it to allow a credit card to be used for monthly payments, to give that an option, so that you can sign somebody up for as little as $10 a month with a credit card. That's the caveat. You've got to have a credit card. All right? Yes, sir, you can ask a question. Go ahead. You, you use the microphone, sir. <laughs> well, I want you to understand it, too. Far. Uh, chapter 41, Wichita Falls, Texas. We still have to do the $40 down payment. Is that correct? That is not correct. That if, is not if, correct. If you have a credit card number and they choose the $10 monthly recurring payment option, you can just do it $10 a month. If they will check the $10 option, that they will do that. Correct. Yes, Thank sir. You. So it does not work unless you have chosen the $10 recurring payment option and have a credit card number. So don't send a check for 10 bucks. That doesn't work that way. Yes, sir. Well, whatever the amount is that they would have to be charged based on their date of birth, yes. So if, they're, if they were under 40, their amount is 250, so it would be 25 months. That's when it would stop, correct. Correct, yes, sir. Yep. So again, $10 a month payment, credit card is required. Now, we've been able to sign people up with credit cards via the apps, right? Uh, for a long time, and I, we, had, uh, we reached out and got the approval from the National Judge Advocate to put this on the form, and the idea is that as long as we have the credit card with the recurring payment, it satisfies the requirements of the Constitution and bylaws for the $40 minimum payment, okay? Um, so again, this, this form is pending uh, final approval. Uh, please don't go home and make up your own forms or anything like that. We'll, we'll get it turned out to you uh, right away. So uh, my analyst always appreciates it when I bring this up because it saves her uh, a bunch of headaches. But um, uh, accessing the online application. Now, if you just go to DAV.org, the online application is mobile friendly, OK? Um, where people mess up quite often is they don't understand that our system uses an email address as the unique identifier for the membership. So if you are to uh, sign somebody up and you use your own email address and then you sign the next person up using your own email address, all of the previous members' payments go towards the last payment, you know, the last membership that you set up because it's drawing from that unique identifier, right? That's not so unique anymore. So if somebody that you're signing up doesn't have an email address, please, you know, set them up a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, whatever. That takes, you know, two or three minutes probably once you get comfortable doing it. If they don't want to do that, that's fine too. There's a mechanism you can use here, and I've got it highlighted in the bottom of the picture. Uh, first name, last name, zip code at DAVDonor.org. That's our generic email address that you can use if they don't have their own email address. Um, so in my instance, it would be Douglas Wells 41042 at DAVDonor.org. Okay? What's that? Yes, so first name, last name, zip code, at davdonor.org. 
So like for me, it would be Douglas Wells 41042, because that's my zip code, at davdonor.org. So just please, uh, you know, let folks know if they're using the, the online application at all, whether it's through the mobile app, on their pad, dav.org, whatever, um, <clears throat> you know, to use a unique email address for every membership they're signing up. And we have seen an ever-increasing amount of folks signing people up online, especially with uh, the March Madness tournament. So I really appreciate your participation. All right, so uh, with respect to the mobile device application, uh, it works with both Droid phones and Safari Apple phones. On the Droid side, um, it seems like Google Chrome works the best for this and it, you don't have any technological issues. Um, so launch the web browser, whether Safari or Chrome, and there's no weird www or anything like that, just type in dav.org slash member app and it'll, one of these two screens will pop up and you'll notice the, um, the little light box there at the bottom that gives you directions on how to save it to your home screen. And really all you're doing is creating an icon from your home screen right to the mobile application. Okay, so we've got that form, you fill it out. The only other little tidbit I would explain to you with respect to the mobile application, Again, we're shoehorning a system that wasn't meant to do this into something else, and we'll have a better product moving forward. I promise to leverage technology on your behalf as much as I can, but it's still a great tool to have. Uh, the only issue is if you have to back up screens, sometimes you lose the information. So just make sure you have all the information there in front of you to sign somebody up and advance your screens appropriately and click done at the end, okay? Um, we've also really tried to engage uh, our folks, whether our, it's our members or, yes sir, you got a question? John Simmons, Chapter 22 in the great state of Virginia. On that application that's on the, uh, the phone, we'll get on there, there, I can't find a place to put the phone number of the new member you're trying to recruit on it. Yeah, that, that was identified to me. I didn't realize that that was the case. I'm fixing that. You're fixing it? Okay, yep. thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that feedback. So, and that's a great point. Uh, you've got my ta contact information. Anything that you can, that you, can uh, you know, think of that can make this process more efficient, easier for you, whatever, I am totally receptive to that. Um, <clears throat> so we're trying to engage our members uh, and our member prospects online. Um, look, direct mail, is not going to go away, um, but direct mail, when we send out our annual mailing from headquarters soliciting members, um, it, it's expensive, right? And it's kind of like a, a one-off. We shoot the, the package to that person, and, you know, whether they open it up or not, we don't know, and, and uh, you know, just paper and postage and all that good stuff, it gets really expensive. So um, we're shifting some of those resources from our direct mail to online solicitations, and we're getting a much bigger bang for our buck that way. So whether it's Facebook ads or banner ads on Bing and Google and all the other search engines, uh, we're just doing, you know, gangbusters with that stuff. Um, how many people in here have used the proud to be a member uh, frame in Facebook? So, yep, quite a few. Um, I really appreciate that. Share that with other folks. Um, also, something that uh, we're really uh, proud to do is we've developed real stories of members that we've helped or, or members that are going on to help other folks and t sharing those stories with our member prospects. Uh, that's really important to do to, to, to provide a real world context uh, for the great work that our members are doing every day and people are responding to it. <clears throat> um, we will be repeating our fall in campaign I'm gonna show you a little video that we created last year here at convention. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty terrific. Our communications team just does such a wonderful job with all that stuff. But um, uh, we, you know, September, October, we'll start our fall in campaign. I hope you help us uh, reach out to folks and, and recruit. We're giving you tools to recruit people uh, in the digital world. Something else we've really been working at, um, you know, when I, when I took the reins a couple of years ago, I realized very quickly that uh, a lot of our partnerships with what we used to call our member benefits was they, they were just, you know, defunct and you could maybe get a better deal by just getting a coupon online and 
none of that stuff, you know, honored the service and sacrifice of our members. So I was very disappointed in some of that. And so with those partner partners, um, you know, we severed ties and we said, we, hey, we'll circle back around with you and maybe get something that's appropriate uh, for uh, the service and sacrifice that our members have, have offered. Um, so we've now rebranded um, our benefits package to call it member advantages. Apparently there was some confusion too whenever we said member benefits, people keyed into VA benefits and that's not what we wanted. So our member advantage partners, our member advantages program um, now has, you know, some oldies but goodies and a bunch of new partners here. Um, so our members will enjoy discounts and special offers from our growing family of partners. And in return, all of these members, uh, all of these partners will give back to DAV for our members using their services. Um, so that's kind of a key component of what we're trying to do. It's called an affinity relationship. So when they get paid, we get paid, and we can turn around and hire more service officers and buy more vehicles and all the great stuff that we do, right? So, uh, you know, Ford has been a legacy partner with us for a long time. USAA, obviously, is a stalwart. Um, North American is really uh, the biggest legacy partner that, that didn't want to uh, lose us, so we kept them on board from, you know, through the whole process, and they've signed a nice deal with us. Uh, Identity Guard, you know, it's a threat uh, identity theft protection. 1-800 uh, Flowers, everybody's familiar with them. Mobility Roadside Assistance, they're like tow trucks that can accommodate people uh, with special needs, like if they're in a wheelchair or whatnot. Uh, so that's pretty terrific. And PCS Grades is a, is a company that uh, does like real estate services and whatnot as well. A uh, little inside baseball, we're getting ready to close the deal with Avis and Budget. So we'll have a rental car company on board as well. So this, these uh, partners will continue to grow and grow and grow until, um, well, not until, but uh, we just wanna make sure we're uh, using this and leveraging this as a, as a way to continue to enhance and improve DAV's programs and services. So I mentioned uh, we filmed a little video last year at convention uh, that we're using as part of our fall in program uh, or campaign. We used it last year, we'll use it again this year uh, with some other stuff that we're planning on doing, but I just wanted to share this with you if you hadn't had a chance to see it yet. What does DAV mean to you? DAV for me means family. You know, they're an awesome organization. DAV means uh, camaraderie. In one word, DAV means service. The DAV means inspiration to me. DAV to me means the insurance of all future veterans' lives. To me, DAV means commitment. Commitment to other veterans and helping them through the transition out of service. DAV means to me integrity. To me, DAV means brotherhood. I found that brotherhood after I left service. DAV is, it means a sense of normalcy again. I joined the DAV to be able to have a voice for the veterans so we weren't just left to the wayside. DAV to me means life. Thank you to our communications team for that. They did a great job with that again. Um, so I, I mentioned I was going to try to fly through these slides because I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of questions. But before I take your questions, I just want to do something that I was remiss in not doing in the, in the beginning. I want to recognize a couple people. So first off, in the audience, uh, if Robin and Heather could stand up, Robin Higgins, my membership manager, and Heather Colmeyer, my business analyst. I don't think uh, Robin's left uh, registration more than a half a dozen times all week, so uh, she's doing a great job for us. Twice, okay, she's telling me twice. Yes, you'll get a raise, Robin. Um, but, uh, uh, and Heather is one of my business analysts, uh, her along with Darlene Purcell back at headquarters, just, you know, blow me away with what they do every day. Uh, and also want to recognize our interim membership committee. On the end, we have Penny Johnson from Utah. And Tank Mizio from Missouri. Mason Causey from Louisiana, and Warren Tobin from the great state of North Dakota, our chairman. So, uh, and afterwards, after we finish up here, uh, they stand ready to answer questions too, and if they don't have the answer, they can certainly uh, articulate it and give it to me, okay? So, with that, questions. Please use the mics if you could. 
Hey, Tommy. Hey, Doug. Tom Wendell, Chapter 10, Virginia. In reference to the list that you're going to be sending out to us once we request it, um, let's just say I asked for the list with people that have emails. As far as a templated letter, have you thought about creating a letter that I could use to put into that email? No, that's a great idea, though. I can't wait to hear it, see it from you, Tommy. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking the idea. same thing when you, with the, you know, I got the list of the prospect members, and, you know, I called Robin and said, hey, is there a letter? And, you know, she said no, and I was thinking of a way of creating a letter for that purpose. Actually, that's a great job for the interim membership committee. Could you uh, write that down, and we'll work on that? That's, that's a great idea. Thank you, Tom. All right. Thank you, Doug. Oh, uh, boy. Chapter 1, Raleigh, uh, Nightdale, North Carolina. A follow-up to his question, why do we have to request a list? Why can't you come up with a system that pushes a list down to each of the chapters? So as I was mentioning, the, the list, the files, would be too unruly. They get too big, and we just they're too big to email. Um, and on top of that, I don't want to send you stuff that you just don't need. So if you, if you kind of talk to my membership specialist and let them know what you're looking to do, whether it's a mail campaign or a uh, email campaign or a phone campaign, whatever it may be, they can massage that and get you the, the best, most current, hottest leads. All right, thank you. Yep. I'm not that tall. And, and by the way, it's not just calling us. If you want to shoot us an email at the membership public email box, you can do that as well. Bonnie Rohn, Colorado Commander. Hi, Bonnie. I still carry my book around so I can sign everybody in but because I like the information that is on the carbon so I can follow up with them later because once you put it all on here or whatever, you've lost their information. And a lot of times I like to get back with a telephone number, email or something like that, ask them how they're doing, mm -hmm. but you don't have the carbon on here. Let me go ahead. Okay. Now, here's the strategy you can do on that. What you do is after you get them, then you go pull that information off on the membership portal once they're a member, and then you can contact and say, congratulations, you're now a member of the DAV. We've got your information. You can do the follow-up that, at that point rather than to, off the carbon. Okay, maybe do. I, I can do both, but I still carry my book around because I yeah. like the well, It's pre <laughs> preference, but I mean, this, yeah, there, I'm, I'm just That's pointing fine. out another strategy that you could use. Right, okay. and, and we... We did look at something like that. Again, like I said, we're using technology that just isn't capable of being that robust, but the yeah. new technology that I'm hopeful to employ could also CC the recruiter, so this, whoever the sponsor of that member was. That's right. what we're going to try to do Thank for you. Thank you. Yep. Great ideas. Yes, Good sir. Good afternoon. Fred Smith, Senior Vice, State of New Jersey. Uh, I looked at the last year I was the chairman of membership, and I looked at those spreadsheets. They were a horror show to try to put them together. Now, I understand you say now you have the zip code to go with them. I have two secretaries still working on it to try to the part-time uh, members to try to find out who they are, where they live, and the zip code. So can we get that, try to make life a little easier? So what you're talking about, I think, were the trial member zip code yeah. lists, right? So all of those folks have been moved. We can give you better prospect files now moving forward. All that was meant to do was to say, hey, the, we're on the clock with these particular people. If we can reach out to as many of them as possible. And I knew in some cases it was, you know, 150,000. I, I get it, you know. So you don't really need to worry about those anymore. They're part of the prospect file. And if you get new prospect files, and as I mentioned, let my team help massage the file for you, you'll be in a much better place. Thank you. Yep. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Carl Martin, uh, Chapter 5, Los Angeles, California. I have two questions. One, on the online application for somebody over 80 that there's no payment required, you cannot submit it. So uh, I think what you're experiencing there, there is a box that you check that says over 80. Depending on your internet connection, you have to wait a moment and the form will switch. So all you have to do is record their, like, their name, address, birth date, their information that way. Um, or when you put in their birth date, it does it automatically now. That's what it does, right? 
Sorry, so we just made that change here recently. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, you gotta give the form the opportunity to switch based on your internet connection. So it'll switch to a different form that will not require a payment. Okay, I couldn't get that to do that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, when we submit memberships for our chapter, a lot of times our members are going to another chapter uh, and not to our chapter when we're specifying it. Why is that? And how can we reverse it other than do the routine of submitting a transfer? It seems like it's a problem for us. Well, uh, again, that's been an ongoing battle with this system for us, um, making sure that folks are being put into the appropriate chapter. Unfortunately, uh, the way that the system works right now um, just to kind of, again, give folks some inside baseball, is whatever chapter, so if you put in 41042 for the zip code, the, the system doesn't use true geocoding. What it does is it finds the chapter that has the most members that have 41042 as the zip code, and that's what it tries to default them into. That doesn't always work out based on geography or whatever the case may be. So you kind of have to override that and let it know. But what you're telling me is that you, you select a specific chapter and it's putting them in somewhere else? Right. Okay. So we'll have to take a look at that and see what the, the, what's going on technologically there and try to address that for you. Could you send me an email? I have my cards up I, here. I certainly will. Yeah, send me an email and, and we'll look and, at that. And the one last quick thing I got sure. is uh, on the portal getting in there, uh, it, it locked me out. I can't figure out how to get in it. Who do you call? Who do you contact? So we had a seminar here. We do a seminar every year. I do two seminars, our membership portal seminar, and I do that on, the, on Friday, and then we do our membership seminar. But Heather Kohlmeyer here, the person, one of the people, I'll just say, raise your hand, Heather. She's got a desk in the registration office uh, in the back corner, and she can help you fix that. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Hi. Daniel Floyd, uh, Chapter 92, High Desert, California. So first question I had, when we contact your team to get the list of the prospect file, specifically how does that, how do, is that gonna come in a PDF, mail, piece of paper? Cause so typically, I like electronics. Typically they'll send it to you in Excel spreadsheet. So you can sort it, mail merge it, whatever you wanna so do. So it's gonna it. be on a disk? And then no, just, it'll, they'll email it to you. They'll email it, excellent, Correct. okay. Right. So then once I get possession of it, um, and I start pursuing it and working it, you know, like a good recruiter does. Mm -hmm. um, our conversion ratio, why don't we incentivize when we get that list for, you know, those isolated pieces, the person that is, or the chapter that's working it the best. And then I think that would give us more incentive to convert what you guys have collected mm -hmm. to what we actually are gaining. You know, that's, that's a great idea. Um, again, I, I, keep, I hate to keep leaning on this, but, you know, the, the limitations of the technology that we have with our new system, perhaps that's something we could track at that finite of a level. Uh, but right now we kind of have to keep it to a global standard so that uh, um, we're not, you know, being drugged down in, in record keeping. You know what I'm saying? I understand. That, okay. That'd be all we do all day, every day. But if we could automate that process, I'm all for it. I, I love individual accolades like that for chapters and, and individual recruiters. Okay, thank Great you. Great idea, thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Doug. This is Greg Dunham. I'm first junior vice commander, Department of Texas, chapter 22 commander of Department of Texas. Uh, I'd like to report that we are leaning forward. We have already taken the list from you and we have our first open house of chapter two residents of Texas in our zip code areas uh, in August, so we're doing that. We're leaning forward on that issue. But my issue is that by our bylaws, that if you are not a paid member within two years or have made a payment within two years, you're a member in bad standing. What is the what is the DAV official rec, uh, stance on that? So when you say our bylaws, you mean our DAV's bylaws? Our chapter bylaws. Okay. So that would be not in accordance with DAV's bylaws. Right. So you would need to change your bylaws on that. Okay. Um, so what, what is the official stance? Right. So the official stance is, um, so a couple of things. And I, we've been talking about this an awful lot lately, I guess. I don't know. So um, 
here's the thing. As your national membership director, it's my responsibility to make sure that if Joe Schmuckatelli sends in a membership application with 40 bucks right. in 2018, right. I need to keep a record of that, right? So after we've made so many distributions based on that payment to the chapters and departments, everybody's familiar that we distribute out for fundraising purposes to the chapters and departments, right? Um, after we've exhausted that initial $40 payment, um, they would then eventually, after three year ends, go to uh, the department at large. They'd become what they call, what we call an inactive member. Right. They go to the department at large and then ultimately to our, what we call our nomad chapter, our national at large chapter, okay? Right. <clears throat> so technically, when they pay, when they become a part life member, they're really a member forever because I have to keep them on the rolls, not towards our active membership, Okay, this, I'm getting a little into the weeds here, but I have to keep a record of that because if in 2025, Joe Schmuckatelli walks back in and pays off the other 210 bucks, I have to apply that credit to him, okay, and make him a full life member, right? So the, to answer your initial question, after three years, they go to the department at large, and then after another three, they go to the Nomad chapter. Okay, I have some that were on there for six years so there's a couple of things that could be happening there, but if you identify that when you're looking at your membership roster mm -hmm. and you're seeing anomalies, just let us know who they are and we'll take a look at them for you. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. It says something. And I, and I want that to be a, an override. Go ahead, Robin. Uh, okay. What Robin just explained, and pardon me if I wasn't clear on this, so once you ex they exhaust their membership, which will take a couple few years, then they have to be inactive for three years in order for them to go to the Department of Large. Okay, I, apologize. I understand. Thank you very much. Right. Yep. So, and they're inactive, unable to distribute. So that's what Robin was saying. Thank you, Robin. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Doug. It's Regina Fortner, Unit Hi. 130, Michigan. Yay. Yay. Just clarification because people look at things differently. You kept saying with a credit card okay is it credit card or credit card debit card you can use a debit card for that purpose okay sure. yep. well when you said just credit card mm -hmm. a lot of people would stick yeah. to a just any that. any electronic form of payment i should okay. say okay sidors chapter seven minnesota doug you may already have said this but because of my hearing i may have missed it when we sign someone up for that ten dollars, does that count as part of our goal? That Are they counts then as part a member. Of, yep, part life members count count towards okay, goal. Okay, if you start a new chapter, you have to have twenty five members now. Well, that's can the you have? Do they have to be fully paid members, or can they be part paid too, like this ten dollars a month? So, first of all, the twenty five members to start a charter. Uh, to receive a charter, that's a proposed bylaw change that hasn't gone into effect yet. I just want to be very clear on that. Um, and yes, part life members count towards uh, establishing a chapter. Yep. So we could have sign up 25 people at $10 a month and they could start a chapter. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Thank you. What's that? Once the bylaws pass. Hopefully at the end of this convention, but they won't go into effect until next year. No, it'll be the next membership year, July 1st. Yep. Good afternoon. Maddie DeBramoletta, uh, Chapter 4, South Carolina. Uh, thanks for answering the question about the inactive members. I did have a question about that, and now uh, I'm clear on it. Uh, the unable to distribute was on the list, and I didn't understand what that was all about, so mm -hmm. thank you so much. My other question is about the at-large members. Um, when uh, the veterans go into the DAV and uh, file their claims and then they ask, they become a member if they do not specify what chapter they want to go to is in this at large. Did I understand correctly that you look at the, that the system look at the zip code as to where uh, your chapter is assigned and that's how they are distributed? Well, no, no, no. So um, first of all, I think you had two different questions really kind of in one there. If we receive an application at headquarters where there is no chapter assigned, my team assigns the most geographically convenient chapter, okay? So there, we don't put people in at-large chapters. We assign them to chapters. 
So even if they did not personally elect to be in a chapter, if they're a brand new member, we're going to put them in a chapter, okay? We don't want folks in at large chapters. Um, that doesn't help you with your distributions either. Uh, secondly, what I was talking about with respect to the system and the way the zip code works, what I'm saying is if you put in, like for my zip code, 41042, okay, the system gives you a list of chapters, and the, the one that's at the very top will be the chapter that has the most members that have the zip code 41042. Thank okay? you. So that it's just, it, it, the system did not, was not able to employ true geocoding back then. As a uh, membership chair, would I be able to, will I get X, can I have access to the at-large for my state or for those zip codes and then our? Or you're at the department level? No. Yeah, so if you're at the chapter level, we'll give you the, the at-large for your chapters. Uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, they're a jurisdiction, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you so much. Yep. So the last two questions right here. Gary Coletti, Chapter 46, Whittier, California. Uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, department service officer for DAV, but I'm also a service officer national for another organization, the VFW. We recruit a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, young OIF, OEF, uh, Desert Storm, everyone, that are going to college, community college, uh, state colleges and that, most of them have a veterans club. If you're chapter service officers or your department service officers, uh, go to the colleges and introduce themselves and tell them about a 21-0966, an intent to file. A lot of them are struggling to stay in school and uh, stay in school and finance their way uh, through their life. Uh, you're offering them an intent to file, gives them one year to file a claim, which a lot of them are because they're back from Afghanistan or Iraq or uh, a combat zone. Uh, could be PTSD, could be any of the uh, desert storm or whatever thing, but that intent to file on a business card saying where their chapter is at and come in and have them help, have them come in and visit without obligation and uh, get help in, in starting a claim or something within the first year works wonders. So what you're saying is DAV is a service first organization and that right. if we offer service first, people are more amenable to becoming members, right? Right. That's perfect. There's a whole webinar on DAV.org about that very thing okay, that we did. Okay, that so. form 21-0966, you can get it off the va.gov website under forms. Write that in, print it out, go to the colleges. And Let, let's make sure our certified chapter service officers are engaging in that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Last question. Okay, I'm Teresa Dula from North Carolina, and I have a question pertaining to the membership when they go inactive and when they go to at large. As far as the chapters, are we still like per se paying taxes on members and do we get money back on them? Or when do we stop getting money back, that money that you get back to us right. when they're inactive and at large? Right, the distribution. Yeah, distribution. Correct, yeah. So if they're inactive and unable to distribute, then no, you don't get anything for them. Okay. So, but the idea is we want to give them a chance to come back in and fulfill their obligation before they're taken out of your chapter. Okay. Because once that happens, in order for them to get back into a chapter, we've got to execute a transfer form. Okay. Right? All right. Thank you. All right. Robin, did you have a point of clarification that you wanted to make? No. Oh, I'm going to repeat it. Right. So what she's mentioning with respect to just a, as a point of clarification, department officials request department at large or um, rosters of the department of large folks, but also that there are some people that want 
to be in department at large. So we have to be careful uh, about, you know, requesting that they come into the chapters. So I, I had, last question, sir. Uh, don't know what that was. John Simmons, uh, uh, Great State of Virginia, Chapter 22. Could you tell us again what the distribution is? How much do we get per full life paid member, partial life paid? I, I'll have to look that up for you. I can't remember what it is right now off the top of my head, but it's in the Constitution and bylaws. So you have the, the minimums are in the Constitution and bylaws, right. and NEC can go above the minimums. Right. So it's in the Constitution and bylaws, though. Okay. Yep. Okay, one other th thing I wanted to, to point out before I close here. Uh, is that something we're trying to do is be a, a no wrong door department at membership. So even if it's a question that I can't or my team can't answer for you, we're gonna get you the right place, right? We're here, we're on your side. I want you to remind folks too that, uh, you know, if they get the letters from, that, are, that are over my signature saying, hey, you got 30 days to give me your office report or else, that sort of stuff, they, they, all those letters also say, please call if you have questions or concerns and I want you to. Uh, we created a new position called membership report liaisons that do all things for me with respect to officer reports, annual finance reports, all that stuff. They work hard every single day. Um, a lot of times they can get you on the phone and, and get you your question answered in just a couple of minutes. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have a question or concern about anything or like I mentioned earlier, a good suggestion. I'm going to hang out. Uh, the interim membership committee will be here with me to answer questions. I do have some cards up here. Folks, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your attendance and attention. Thank you so much.